Welcome to Liberty Park Music. I'm Michelle Huang, your piano instructor. In today's lesson, we'll look at King William's March by the English Baroque composer Jeremiah Clark. We'll talk about detailed articulations in both hands, as well as how to shift position and move about the keyboard. Clark was an English composer and organist in the 17th century. He was most well known for his keyboard piece, Trumpet Voluntary, which was later arranged for trumpet, string orchestra, and organ by Sir Henry Wood, the version that we often hear today. This is a popular piece for weddings and was played at Prince Charles and Princess Diana's wedding in 1981. Just like the trumpet voluntary, the piece we will talk about in lesson today is also a march called King William's March. This piece was written for the harpsichord and came from Clark's collection of keyboard pieces called the Harpsichord Master. Spend a few minutes now to observe a few things about the music. Jot down a few notes about the key, meter, rhythmic patterns, repetition of phrases, fingerings, articulations, and dynamics. It's always a good idea to do a general survey of the piece before playing. Here are a few observations for the music. The key is in D major. We can confirm this by looking at the first and the last note of the piece. The meter is in cut time. Start practicing in four time first, counting four beats a measure. Then once we have learned all the basics and feel comfortable with the movements, we can count in two. For the rhythmic patterns, the right hand has a combination of quarter and eighth notes, and the left hand has a combination of half notes and quarter notes in the A section, and a combination of half notes, eighth, and quarter notes in the B section. For the repetition of phrases, each line is a four-bar phrase. Phrase one and two are almost alike, except the last two measures of each phrase. Phrase three and four are different, but both phrases have similar rhythmic pattern as phrase one and two. As you can see on the score, not all the fingerings are shown. The fingerings that are shown on the score are important because it usually indicates that we need to move to another position. In other places, it indicates finger crossing. There are no articulation marks written on the score, except at the beginning. The term non legato means to play without legato. We will talk about articulation more in a bit. For the dynamics, forte, piano, means to play the first time loud and on the repeat, play soft. The B section begins with mezzo forte, then crescendo to forte in measures 13 to the end. 
After a brief overview of the composer and a general survey of the musical elements of Clark's King William's March, let's talk about fingerings and the movements about the keyboard. Let's play the right hand one slowly, playing everything legato for now, paying attention to the fingerings given, which often indicates a shift in position. Here, open the hand up a bit and bring up the wrist to play the F sharp. Then shift the entire hand down to place 4 on A. Shift up for the big leap from D to F sharp. Same thing in the next phrase. In section B, Here, watch out for the fingering crossings. Remember to shift the thumb down after the two crosses it. Here, shift the thumb. Last phrase has more finger crossings. Remember finger crossing as a way to shift position while still connecting the notes. The left hand fingering is pretty straightforward. It begins with repeated low Ds. Then shift down to F sharp. Same thing in the second phrase. is the same way. Starts with the A octave. In the last phrase, pay attention to the many fingerings and position shifts. to keep following the fingerings on the score, which will help you move about the keyboard. Now let's look at how to vary the articulations in the Baroque style. Articulations in the Baroque period are generally played with less legato and more detachment. The smallest note values of the piece are usually played legato, since these are the notes with the smaller intervals and can be played with more fluidity when play connected. In this piece, the eighth notes are the smallest note value, therefore they are play connected. The larger note values such as the quarter note and half notes are often played detached. Let's play the right hand once, following the two general guidelines we have just talked about. The eighth notes are played legato, 
and the half and quarter notes are played detached. A quick review of the detached motion is a simple nudge of the keys from the wrist. Let's play the right hand together. The left hand begins with repeated Ds, which will detach slightly in between the notes. Be sure to hold each note to almost its full two whole beats before detaching last minute to play the next one. Remember the motion here is a simple nudge of the keys and leave a little space in between the notes. Section, connect the eighth notes and detach the others. slowly to put hands together. Paying close attention to when the hands lift to detach and when they are connected. to play slowly so the hands can get used to playing different articulations at the same time and building that interaction into the muscle memory. Continue to practice slowly to put hands together for the rest of the piece. The dynamics shown on the score indicate character in this piece. We begin loud and strong. Every beat is heard very clearly. has a very march-like quality. You can think of the beginning as the king and the queen processing into a festive event, which is very grand and majestic, as marked at the beginning of the music, maestoso. section, it's an echo effect, plays softer. This adds variety to the music since we already heard a tune the first time. In the B 
section, at the beginning, it's marked mezzo forte, which is a bit more reserved and stately, and showing the regality and elegance of the music. In this lesson, we learn about the Baroque keyboard style through Jeremiah Clark's King William's March. Continue to practice the fingerings, the movements about the keyboard, the articulations, and the character of the piece. See you next time.